forth. Well, Americans may be feeling a beat about the economy if they're willing to pay all these higher prices, right? Uh, but stocks ended a holiday shortened session on the downside. In fact, it accelerated by day's end. A lot of this is worry about trade, uh, how a strong dollar and a very, very weak uh, Chinese one are going to boomerang on American internationals, uh, especially some of those big technology concerns like AT&T and uh, I could go on with Apple, etc. They're all feeling the pinch and the, the, the threat of a trade war that could well, really exact an even bigger pinch. The Daily Mail White House correspondent Francesca Chambers is here, Fox News contributor Jonas Max Ferris and Melissa Armo uh, with the stock swoosh. All right, Melissa, swoosh right to what happened today then. What caused this late day sell? If I say late day, we had an abbreviated session, but it seemed to accelerate from roughly noon to 1 p.m. Eastern time when things finally closed. Yes, well, the market did swoosh down today. And after the rally yesterday, I really wasn't buying in the rally yesterday. I didn't think that was anything of a big deal. We were down in the pre-market. We gapped up today, but we fell. Remember, it's a holiday week. Overall, July is going to be a very volatile month. There's so many things coming up. The new July tariffs are coming out with China Friday. You have Pompeo going to North Korea. You have Trump meeting with Putin. It's earnings season. Expect a lot of craziness for the market in the month of July. And the direction probably maybe could be down. I don't see us making new highs in the month of July in the Dow or the S&P. You know, what's interesting, Francesca, is the uncertainty over trade and where this is all going. Uh, this started with aluminum and steel, as I've often said. Uh, but now with some EU tariffs in effect and soon are those from Canada already in effect, we're looking at hundreds of items that have gone everywhere from cherries to whipped cream to automobiles and it doesn't stop there. That uncertainty is weighing on folks, isn't it? That's right. And we heard President Trump say over the weekend, Neil, to Fox, that he thinks that the EU is perhaps worse than China in some areas when it comes to trade. And that's a really notable comment because next week, President Trump will go to Europe for the meeting with NATO, where he'll have a chance to talk to European leaders. And he has explicitly singled out Germany repeatedly as one of the greatest offenders. So we don't know much about who he'll meet with yet while he is in Europe. But we're looking to see, however, if he has a one on one chat with with German Chancellor Angela Merkel during that trip. And we all recall, of course, when he was at the G7 recently in Canada, this was a very big topic and it's something that was on uh, everyone's minds. And so we'll be looking to see what comes out of that trip from President Trump, but also what the European leaders have to say. You know, uh, Jonas, is it your sense that for the markets, which t tend to ride up or down based on the prospects of trade things escalating, uh, when they do, they, they sell off. When they don't, they don't. Um, but the, it's concerned that this is spreading and that no one seems to be blinking is, is beginning to, you know, agitate. And it, I think it's worrying investors more than consumers at this stage. Uh, you know, prices go up because cons consumers are doing well. The economy's hot, which is really why gas prices are up at the end of the day. And there's more money in people's pockets. That's not a bad thing that causes problems in, in markets. Maybe interest rates will go a little too high because of that. But if prices start going up because of a tit-for-tat trade war and it keeps going, it escalates and escalates, at some point investors are like, wait a second, interest rates already are being put up by our government, or by the Federal Reserve, to control the fact that the economy is hot and might be inflationary. Then you've got these prices going up, and then mortgages are higher. All of a sudden, it could cause a recession. So we don't know where it's going, so investors are scared about the future. Consumers are only seeing very little action so far from these tariffs, but investors are more worried about do they do we keep raising rates? Do we, where's inflation going to go? How much further is this going to go? Is it going to get Europe involved as much as, as China? And, and it's scary to investors. Melissa, is it scary to you? Is this noise scary to you? No. Long term, we have good things on the horizon. I'm thinking 2019, 2020, the economy's strong. I think the market lifts around again at some point later in 2018, but we've only been trading in a range. It seems scary, but we had such a big run in 2017. Right after Trump got elected, the market ran almost straight up like this. So how can you really complain? We're so far off. We're a long way off from a recession. I'm not worried in the long term. Right now, just this month, I mean, I wouldn't buy anything in the next four weeks, but that's not a big deal. You know, friends, that's, uh, I'm getting you cover closer than I different reads from the administration how they want to go about this, though, mm -hmm. from the Commerce Secretary indications that uh, the president isn't really focusing on the markets. Uh, others saying that he is. Uh, others arguing that we want to go slow on this. Still others indicating quite the opposite. So uh, w what's the real deal here as far as how far to keep pushing China, Europe, uh, Canada? Mm -hmm. 
President Trump does believe that in the end, Neil, that this is going to play out in his favor. You already look at the economy and the low unemployment numbers that have been trending downward in the Trump administration, and that's been a highlight for President Trump in the past few months. At the same time, he says that when you look at these tariffs in Europe and you look at what's going on with China, that, by the way, they, the administration says this isn't a trade war, it's just a trade dispute, and they consider them trade negotiations. And the president has repeatedly said that he expects at the end of the day that some of these tariffs won't even uh, end up going into effect because this will all get worked out. And that's, again, why these conversations that he'll be having in Europe next week are just so important. All right, guys, I want to thank you all very, very much. We alluded to it. I just want to remind you again, uh, the president has fired another salvo on uh, our allies, if you will, particularly NATO, and those that are not paying their bill or the 2% minimum uh, to, to work over to defense. He sent letters, we're told now, to the leaders of Germany, Belgium, Norway, and Canada that starts something like this. Dear Cheapskate, didn't really get that bad, but it's going to be an interesting event when they meet for that NATO summit next week in Brussels. So a lot going on there, a lot going on, the president narrowing his choice for the next Supreme Court justice. We're told it sounded just a few folks. Who are they? John Roberts on that after this.